Hi, my name is Aaron. I'm from Gulfside Marine in Southwest Florida. Um, today we're going to be talking about doing a compression test on four-stroke outboards or outboards in general. Um, and this one specifically is a Yamaha 250 horsepower motor. Um, I've got about 20 years, 20 plus years in the marine industry and um, Yamaha is a very common name and you can apply these ideas and, and this method to most four-stroke outboards. Okay, so to get started, basically what we're going to do today is we're going to pick out the right compression tester and the right adapter. Okay, so this is a standard compression tester that you can buy from any uh, tool supplier. And then this is a, a generic adapter for the specific type of spark plug. What you'll notice is that the adapter is very similar in size and length to the spark plug. The spark plug does have a little bit greater reach than this adapter, but this is the close ad closest adapter I have to this spark plug. So this adapter will work. When you do a compression test in an outboard motor, I like to remove all of the spark plugs. That way you have an even resistance against your compression tester per all the cylinders. So what we're going to do is, we're going to use our impact here, we're going to remove the coil packs from the motor. This is called a coil over ignition system and inside these little boxes is the ignition coil. So on these motors there's no spark plug wires. We're going to take our socket and we're going to remove our spark plugs. A good old fashioned special tool, a piece of fuel hose. Works very, very well for spark plugs that are rec recessed in a cylinder head. You just slide it right over the end of the spark plug, it grabs the end of the spark plug, and you can spin it right out. Now this is a V6 four-stroke outboard motor. I've already removed the coil packs and spark plugs from the other side of the engine. One of the things that we want to make sure of is that the engine is not energized so that it will try to start, meaning the injectors won't fire um, and the other systems in the engine don't activate when we crank to start. All we want to do is crank the engine over to simulate a starting sequence. That's all we want to do because that's how the motor is going to start when you, the motor, use your engine. The cylinders are numbered, cylinders number one through six. On the right hand side, because it's the highest cylinder, that's cylinder number one. You alternate to the left, cylinder number two, three, four, five, and six. That's how the cylinders are oriented. We're going to install our compression tester. You screw it all the way in, just hand tight. And then connect our compression gauge. What I've done is I've connected a jumper lead to the primary connection of the starter solenoid. So when I put this to positive 12 volts, the starter will engage and crank the engine. What we're going to do is our gauge is zeroed out and we're going to crank this motor over until that gauge stops moving. Once it stops moving, that's the maximum compression this motor will create in this environment during a starting sequence. So we've got just about 200 and let's say 2 PSI of pressure that this particular cylinder created during the start or crank sequence. Now I've already done a compression test on this motor and it does have good compression. What we're looking for is once we crank the engine over till we reach our maximum PSI for each of the six cylinders, we want to compare that compression number. We want to see 
no more than a 15 PSI difference between the cylinder with the highest compression and the cylinder with the lowest compression. Now in some four-stroke outboard motors, regardless of brand, sometimes you can actually see a greater variance closer to 30 PSI. Do we recommend that? Do we like that? Not necessarily. We like to see the 15 PSI or less. Check with your engine manufacturer to see what their specific requirements are for a motor that has good compression. One of the things you have to be careful of as a consumer, some manufacturers, some dealers, and some repair facilities will open the throttle plates to allow more air in when you crank the motor over. This is a way to fool a compression test. You don't step on the gas pedal in your car and floor your car so the throttle plates in your car are wide open when you start it. You don't do that on your outboard motor. Usually you go and just turn the key. You don't put your outboard motor to full throttle to start. Some of the old outboard motors were like that where you had to advance the throttle. Modern four strokes are not like that in most cases. So why would you put your throttle in the wide open throttle or open throttle position when you do a compression test? Because that's not how your motor idles. The weak or low compression shows up the most at idle. So if your motor idles rough, it's hard starting, you may have low compression. And there's several reasons for low compression. We'll get in that, get into that, or those reasons in other videos. But right now, like I said, we're looking for that 15 PSI, no more than that 15 PSI difference. This motor has great compression and it should last a very long time as long as the customer services his engine. Remember guys, we're Gulfside Marine, we're in Southwest Florida. We're always happy to help with your outboard needs. And remember, everything works before it breaks.